morning am i audible to you guys yes ma'am okay okay uh, yesterday we mainly discuss about local search i hope you guys are clear with the local search <coughs> so today we will see adversarial search adversarial search means suppose in previous topics okay let me share my screen first okay <coughs> Can you see the whiteboard? Yes, ma'am. Can you all see the whiteboard? See, in previous topics, we have studied the search strategies which are only associated with a single agent and that aims to find a solution which often express in the form of a sequence of actions, right? <clears throat> like from starting point to the goal point, we always follow the sequence and that sequ uh, sequence of actions also constitutes your solution. But there might be some situations where more than one agent is searching for the solution in the same source base. Okay. And normally that happens in your gameplay. <clears throat> so the environment with more than one agent is known as your multi agent environment. And we learned about multi agent environment earlier, right? So <clears throat> in multi agent environment, each agent can act either your uh, opponent or a cooperative player okay it can be both opponent or cooperative player in some places in some games maybe the other player is like your cooperative like your friend and in other places it mostly your opponent <clears throat> okay but for most of the games like two player games we consider the other agent as your opponent <clears throat> okay that means they play against each other so each agent needs to consider the action of other agent and effect of that action on their performance right <clears throat> so searches in which two or more players with conflicting goals are trying to explore the same search space for the solution are mainly called your adversarial searches and adversarial search are nothing but your game playing okay these are mainly your <coughs> games so like formal definition you can say Adversarial search is a search <coughs> where we examine 
the problem which arises which arises when we try to plan ahead of the world. <coughs> and other agents are planning against us. Okay. <coughs> you can write down to <coughs> so adversarial search is a search where we examine the problem which arises when we try to plan ahead of the world and other agents are planning against us. So basically, these are used for gameplay, okay? You can just say your games. <coughs> so here there can be two or more players with your conflicting goals and both all the players are trying to explore the same search place for a solution. Okay. So games are modeled as a search problem and heuristic evaluation function are there to help uh, each other, not each other means both the players to find their goal. <coughs> and basically in this case, the heuristic evaluation function and the model are like two main factors which will help us to solve any games in AI. <clears throat> now, what can be the common games for AI? There are four types of games normally. Types of games. <coughs> In AI. One is perfect information. A game with the perfect information is that in which agents can look into the complete board. Okay, and agents have all the information about the game and they can also see each other's move. Okay, so can you guess what can be the perfect information type of games? Agents can see the opponent, it can see the complete board and can see the moves as well chess yes correct chess checkers go these are your perfect information game so we to get one other number by the day then your imperfect information
<coughs> so here if in a game agents do not have all information about the game and not aware with like what's going on such type of games are mainly imperfect information game so agents will not have complete information and they will be like don't know what's going on and all okay so these are imperfect information can you guess any a very uno in uno it's uh, not exactly uno because uno also a luck factor is involved correct but it is type of imperfection as well <coughs> a very common game is your tic tac toe we all play tic tac toe then battleship there can be other like bridge <coughs> and so on then comes your deterministic Deterministic games are those games which mainly follow a strict pattern and set of rules for the games and there is no randomness associated with them. So since it follows a strict pattern and strict set of rules, so it can be also your tic-tac-toe game. It has a certain rule, right? Again, same, same, same like uh, checkers, chess, because it also follows rule. <clears throat> then comes your non-deterministic games. So non-deterministic games are those games which have various unpredictable events and has a factor of chance and luck. And this factor of chance or luck is introduced by either your dice or cards. So there is some randomness and each action response is not fixed. So such games are also called your stochastic games. Here you can count Uno, Monopoly, Poker, Begemon and all. <clears throat> okay. So here a chance or a luck factor will be involved. There will be randomness, cards, dice, anything is involved. Ludo, yeah? Ludo is another example of this one. Let's say Monopoly. Ludo. But card game involved her, yeah. It's counted to poker. Etc. So these are four types of games in AI. So this can be perfect and deterministic then some can be perfect but non-deterministic and some can be imperfect but still deterministic and again some can be imperfect but non-deterministic <clears throat> okay but here means for this case adversarial search we are not going to see all so basically we will check zero sum game okay
Okay, so what is a zero sum game? Okay, so zero sum games are your adversarial search which involves pure competition. Okay, pure competition may be, I can give you example like uh, there is only one trophy and there are two opponents and both are fighting each other to get just one uh, particular trophy like your chess or like uh, no not ludo like two player games okay but there are some games those are not zero sum game means for each uh, player there might be different different uh, prizes okay uh, for zero sum maybe you can think player one player two there is just one trophy okay but for non-zero sum two players are there but there are various different different components maybe red green blue and all so one player might take the red part and other player might take the blue part so at in the end you can just um, calculate how many reds for one player then how many blues for the other player and based on that situation they decide the um, winner but in zero sum game it's like pure competition okay so in zero sum game each agent's gain or loss of utility is exactly balanced by the losses or gains of the utility of another agent okay so one player of the game try to maximize one single value while other player tries to minimize it like in chess whenever for a good move there will be a um, prize or there will be some number and each time one player cuts the uh, player of another one then it will be a penalty so one will try to maximize the value single value and the other one will try to minimize the value okay that's how they will balance out each other's points so each move by one player in a game is called as ply means those moves are called ply each move by one player in the game is called as play. P-L-Y. So here I say pure competition. Two players mainly. So example of zero sum games are your tic tac toe, then chess. Example can be There are lots of other games also. Very basic one are this one. <clears throat> so your zero sum game basically involves embedded thinking. Okay. Embedded thinking means one player is trying to figure out what to do, how to decide the move and needs to think about his opponent as well. So the opponent also think what to do. Okay, so it involves embedded thinking. So what it thinks, what to do, how to decide the move, Then think about the opponent.
Opponent means mainly the moves. The opponent also think. What to do? <clears throat> so here, each of the players is trying to find out the response of his opponent to their actions. So this requires embedded thinking, or you can also say backward reasoning to solve the game problems in AI. Okay, zero sum up to zero sum. Okay, a baswa bhalke five minute break lo bhaba hineloi tapasat next day. Okay. So whole adversarial search is for multi-agent uh, multi environment and the environment can be deterministic, non-deterministic, then perfect or imperfect. And mainly we will discuss about zero sum, which can also be called like two player games. Then it will have perfect information because it can see the opponents, it can see the whole board, it can also see the moves of the other opponent. So deterministic will be also your fully observable environment in which two opponents will try to defeat each other. Or you can say one will try to win and other will try to make the other lose okay so based on that some utility values will be there at the end of the game which will always be equal and opposite okay like for example like in chess when one player wins i can say utility value is plus one and if other player loses then i can say utility value is minus one and if the game is draw then i can say the utility value is zero <clears throat> so in zero sum games we are going to call it max and mean game okay i'll come to this part just remember we will call it max and mean uh, I just make it capital letter for both. <laughs> so means by normal way max moves first and then they take turns moving until the game is over so whoever will make the first move we will call that player as max okay so at the end of the game points are awarded to the winning player and the penalties will be given to the loser 
okay so now we can formally define a game with the help of certain uh, terminologies how we can formalize a game So there are certain elements or I can also say components. So one is initial state. So in this initial state will specify how the game is set up at the start. Okay, it's just the initial setup of your game. Second is your players. So this one will specify which player has moved in the search space. Okay, so this one will decide which one will be the max and which one will be the mean. Initial stages. Starting setup. I can Players are moved. Okay, here as well there will be action or value and the state. State is important almost like any AI problems. Next is your actions. So actions will basically return a set of legal moves. Legal moves, why I'm saying legal moves? Because there will be certain rules and regulation for a move. Only those actions will be counted. Next is your result. So result is like it's a transition model, okay? So it will basically specify the result of moves in the state space. Okay, these are the basic ones, initial state, players, actions, result, and then we have a terminal state. Terminal state, you can think like your goal state. Okay, so terminal test is true. Sorry, it's, it's, it's test. So it will basically prove if the game is over, else it will just provide false, okay? So the state where the game ends is called your terminal states. Yeah, there is a terminal state as well. Game is over, otherwise false, then terminal Uh, you can make another point or you can just write in the same place.
game animals. Okay. So the last point is the main thing, which is your utility. So utility function gives you the final numeric value for a game that ends in a terminal state. Okay, if I suppose I write like S and P like this, then it will provide the utility value of the state S and the player P. This is player and this is the state. So it gives final numeric value. for a game that ends in terminal state S for player P. Okay, so this is also called your payoff function. So utility, another word is your P of function. So in case the outcome is like win, loss or draw, then the values can be like plus one, minus one or zero. Okay, and in, uh, that, that is for normal chess game, but for there can be other games which will have like wider variety of possibilities and all. Okay, so until here, it's just game formalization. So formally, we can represent a game with these terms. Initial state, players, actions, result, terminal test, utility, or payoff function. Okay, since we have this terminologies for formalizing a game and to remember all of the states, This is a P of So, if we can formalize a game in terms of a search problem, that means we can also form a game tree. Okay, so a game tree is a tree which will have certain nodes 
and there will be some edges and edges will define the moves of player. Okay, so a game tree will basically involve your initial state, actions, action functions and the result function. Okay, so what happened is now everything will comes in terms of like two player game. So it will uh, comes as like max and min. Okay, so player will alternately play once the max will start playing then the turn will be for the main so max will initiate the game so whoever will be the first player to initiate the move he will be the max and the second player will be the main so max will try to maximize the result of the game tree and main will try to minimize the result okay so in next class i'll i can show you the game tree for a tic-tac-toe game so it will take some time so i will not continue today so this is just the basic of adversarial search so it's mainly used for your game theory All of interesting ne to part. Slight game bully. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay, I uh, you guys are already in that previous seven semester Google Classroom, right? Now I have renamed that class as eight semester and I have uploaded all the notes for unit one. You can go to the class and go to the artificial intelligent part and you can see all the notes for uh, unit one. Link to Lagile Mako Bar Didim. But he to classroom already asa to Malaka. Just CNS exam partisu assignment is the same uh, one. Never check Korasan. Kunabe got it right. Okay. Everyone got it. Okay. Uh, second unit. Um, we have started the second unit, so I'll provide the notes by at least this weekend, maybe Saturday, Sunday. I have time so I can provide the notes. Okay, so what is the game tree? Let's see. Anyways, I'll stop sharing here. I hope I'm not going too fast. If you cannot follow me just tell me immediately okay uno uno bahut ko aisa uno bahut ke khali sa ne okay I'm stop sharing Switch on your videos for a while. Video on correct, yes, away. But what about exam? Anyone have any exam? No exam. Okay, good. Network not good. Nagosha Lidomo Lidomo and okay. Okay, I hope you guys are following me.
if I'm going too far, just let me know. If I'm going too slow, then also let me know. Aman Koshik Lidomo, not okay, Lidomo, not good network. Anyways, thank you. I'm ending the meeting now, okay?